Greetings and salutations to Ray Koppel coming at you from Denver, Colorado with another episode of Nautilus Screw Guy. Today we're going to take a look at installing and using Debian. So we're going to show you how easy it is to install Debian. I also want to let you know I got a new microphone sitting right over here. I mean, this is a camera over here. You can see it. There, there you see it in the corner down there. Right you there. That's my new mic, my new mic, new mic. I say new in quote because it's actually my son's had it for a while. He didn't know how to use it right, and he said it didn't work. It does. He just didn't know how to use it correctly. Um, so it has game function on, on the microphone, so I can just put my game on software to zero. So it sets now, and I have the game pull on there. So that means I can use this microphone for other things too. And we have a uh, Debian OS, which we're going to take a look at. I'm going to show you where I got the ISO because you have to kind of hunt for it a bit to find it. So I'll show you where I got it from. Okay, you should be able to see the uh, the uh, Debian web page here. Debian is a complete free operating system. You have to remember also the Debian, Debian stuff, what it means by free isn't necessarily, oh, it doesn't cost you anything, although I don't think it does. Generally, it doesn't cost you anything to, to download it and use it. Because free operating system means that it's free and open source software. FOSS, or abbreviated FOSS usually, most, most places. So it's free and open source software, which means non-free doesn't mean you have to pay for it either. <laughs> so, it just is a term to indicate what's open source, what's not. Non non free software has proprietary stuff in it, and also has unofficial ones. You can get it for what was the proprietary stuff in it. Especially helpful if you have things like the Wi-Fi drivers or stuff like that 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 uh, don't play nice with uh, most planes. You can get it so it has it in there. So anyway, you got to download. Download Debian here. And you click on that. And you go, wow, 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 what's all this stuff? Now, the first thing it has you, you can get the Debian net installer right here, which is a small ISO of 300 and some megabytes big. And, uh, yeah, if you download this now, it's going to take you through an in cursor type of thing, I think. And it gives you a choice of uh, distros, desktop environments, and window managers, all sorts of them. So you can install that way. So but this is the one, the installer that most people would download, because it's the first one you have to do, and you oh, this is what I need, so you download that. What you really need is your live live uh, ISO, official live ISOs. So you see here's non-free images. And it says you, you can get installers and images, such as live systems, on-flying installers for systems without a network connection, installers for the CPU architectures. Just, you have to have a network connection for this one to work. And our cloud instances can be found at getting Debian. So that's where you want to go. To get the, if you need non free, you can go there. But this is where we're going to now. You go there and it's a little confusing at first because you have all those things you have, you have options for. So this is what you download. That was on the other page that you could download. But it's, you don't want that one probably. So what you do uh, is try Debian Live before installing. So, then you click on that. So it's a user-friendly, end-user-friendly Calamaris installer for most of those. Probably all of them, but. And you want to click on AMD if you have a 32-bit computer, you download the i386. Otherwise, you download, you click here. And taste this page. You what? Well, there's a lot of pages to go through in it. Yeah, pretty much. This is the page I was saying about though. 
what you want to do if you want to go trait download you scan down here and then the toward this one drop down here you see all these files these are ISO now you want to download one that has ISO on the end so you have your cinnamon and you have your gnome your KDE your LXD and LXQT is right there LXQT ISO your MATE ISO and I don't know what standard is but you got a standard ISO I don't know what that is um, standard desktop whatever that might mean might mean no I don't know it better make more sense to me the XFC ISO so those are all the desktop entries you got on it so you can download any one of those ISOs in this list and it'll, that's what I did I downloaded KDE because I like KDE so I downloaded KDE and I know GNOME is probably the flagship desktop for for generic Debian vanilla Debian but uh, I like KDE better so plus I can make it show you how to make it a a uh, dynamic tiling window manager on it pretty easy too so so that's what I did I downloaded the KDE uh, so right you there that's what we're going to install today so with that said let's see we'll move on to installing the ISO so here we are on our installation page I'm on my uh, thing now I downloaded both the net install and the uh, KDE right to there so yeah you got that there and I'm going to install of course the uh, Debian live on this computer right over here okay now Debian live with localization support the dev graphical Debian installer or Debian live kernel so you can just go straight to the installer if you wanted to or you can go right here to the graphical installer or you can go up here and do the live version of it which is what we download this for let's boot into it and see what we have this is kernel 5.10.0 on it standard for buster I mean a bullseye Debian 11. Alrighty. So let's boot up in the live environment. Taking a little while to boot up. There he goes. Now bring up KDE Plasma. There you are. KDE Plasma. Live environment of Debian. Okay, so what's the first thing we want to do when we do this? We want to, so right here, there works, disconnected. And there's a couple of them up here. I think I found that it'll jump on you generally, unless they've improved it a lot. So one thing that is, I is always put it here. And now I can't jump on me because I got it isolated. So. Now yeah, I'll use a classic blowfish for this since I don't have time to set up a key for it.
Okay. Do we have any connection? Woohoo. So we have any connection now? Can you install and Debian up here if you wanted to, or you play around in this if you wanted to for a while? We're going to install Debian. Then we'll play around in it. So you look very familiar. If you're familiar with the Calamar installer at all, it's look very familiar to you. So, yeah, so the American English, yep, I'm English, American, speak English. So it's best English I can, at least. And uh, no, I don't live in New York City or I'm not in the Eastern Time Zone. I'm in the Western Mountain Time Zone. So there we got that. And yep, yep, yep. Default US keyboard, yep. Now here's where you want to do your replace partition install on side of no 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 could install on side of but it's broke so it don't erase this yes erase whole disk or if you need to you can do some manual partitioning maybe add a specific drive or something that had a uh, home directory in it or something like that you could do that probably here's where you encrypt your system you want to encrypt it i'm not going to bother encrypting this right now and yeah so it looks like it's gonna set up a swap file of 8.6.8 .8 gigabytes 8.8 .8, i think so yeah 8.8 .8. and it's gonna have debian installed in the main root partition and your boot partition is right there 300 megabytes pretty standard stuff there all right And here, our full name is Rick. Apple. And it's like Rick for my username. So you can say whatever you want in there. You can put whatever you want in the username. So have to remember what it is. That's what you're going to log in with. Is that username, whatever you put in there. So. And some people get mixed up with what's the name of this computer? What are they expecting? Well, this is just your own conventions. Whatever you want to put, you can put anything you wanted there. As long as it's a, a different name than what's on every other computer is on your network. So you call it Harry, you call it Joan, you call it another computer, Jane, or whatever, you know, whatever names you want to come up with on that regard. So, but I, my system is, I usually call it the name of the computers. This is Dell Optiplex, so I call it Dell O. The distinction between the Dell and the living room, which is just my, I have a Debian server on there, and it's my mom's old computer, which is really old. <laughs> and uh, so it didn't have a lot of memory on it, so I have a server on it for my music and my uh, pictures. So Dello is what I use for my this computer's name. And a strong and complicated password as they tend to say. And that checks out. Now do I want to log in automatically without asking for the password? Nope. Not generally. There's a computer too I did that on recently. It was basically Ones that all reboot in the middle of the night and I wanted to boot back up so that it was one of the kids and mom. Nobody around here knows how to use computers much except for me uh, as far as all this kind of stuff goes. So I have to worry about anybody messing with things and stuff that much. There's mainly a computer for, for them to use. So uh, it made it simpler on them and also so they wouldn't have to log in every time. They would do that. Now, here's your summary. So you can look this over if you need to. See what it's going to do. We are pretty much what it's going to do. And there's what everything is going to do your disk. So, yeah. Let's, so we install. And it kicks in. So you hit the install button, it kicks in. Some of them ask you, warn you that you're going to about to ratio your disk. Are you sure you want to do this? So you're not sure by that point, there's no point in doing it, so I kind of agree with this, but sometimes people might click on install thinking they're going to get that button, and 
And they, oh, I forgot to do this and something like that. So anyway, we're going to watch this install. And uh, I'll come back when it's done. Done, finished. Took about, let's see, uh, five minutes for it to install. Not bad. Not bad. And so now it says restart. So let's restart it and see what it does. Go ahead and pull my... Okay. Hopefully this one will restart in sufficient time. Hopefully this one will start in good time. It looks like it's going pretty well. So far so good? Yeah. Debian, Debian, Debian. And it's our system starting up, then login screen, yay. Select your login screen. This isn't, uh, this is STDM, probably, uh, login manager. Or display manager, whichever one you're going to call it. Kind of plain Jane, but it's vanilla, vanilla, Debian, uh, KDE. So what do you expect? It's going to KD. And here we are, KD. First thing she'd always do with these distros, especially Debian, is updated, right? So, first, I think, let's see. Yes. Control Alt T brings up a terminal. Yes. It's a little bit bigger. And we can. Do sudo apt update. No, oh, I guess we have to set the. Yeah, we have to set the. Forgot about the checking this. First thing you gotta do is connect your network. It's activated, it says. It's interesting. Seemed like it didn't pull the settings for this over, but it did pull the settings for the wallet over for some reason. So, you know, let's try this again. Should be ready to roll. And there she goes. I'm going to make this bigger so everybody can see it. Yeah, security updates are bad. Well, I bet it's a... I see these packages says so we upgraded. So we'll go up, up. Update upgrade. Yeah, let's do all those. Anyway, she blows. We'll cut this out and... See on the other end of this update. So we finished with the uh, update system settings. What that is, up. we're gonna go over here. We're gonna show it this video through here. Screen locking. Uh, five minutes. Nope. Nope. And yeah, so we leave all that. So I take this thing that I thought to take that off, apply. Then you go over here, get in the power. Power management right there. And you then take off the screen at five minutes, take off screen and saving. So you'll switch off after 10 minutes. 
And the power button is pressed. I will do shutdown. Now that we've updated stuff, we can do other things. And I'm going to show you another way to update, which is maybe simpler for some people. Using command line, some people are scared of the command, command line. So we're going to show you how to do it without using the command line real quick. Now let's see. Go down here to menu. Software center. Uh, yeah, software in the... Katie Software Center, I have Discover, which is KDE's version of Software Center, which is decent, it's not bad, it's pretty good. You can get applications like, Creed is one I've used before, and yeah, these are featured. They feature these apparently. Anyway, if you want to do updates, just go up to date, so it's up to date right now, but it's where updates will be. You clicked on this, take you to the thing, and it says up to date. Check for updates up here. Basically, it runs a uh, uh, app to update. Security updates are available. So, instead, so anyway, we can update all. There, the up to date says. I said I do it on command line for sure, but I'm not sure how you do it in Discover. You can do it in Discover. I mean, it's too hard to do that. So, what do you do? So, you know, is, uh, there you go. Let's fix this so it's not so small or everything, okay? Oh, there you go, that fixes it. And then... Uh, take a while to take effect for some reason, so anyway. You got that, and then we can use that. That's more usable, you can read it on there, pretty much. So we're going to go to... Cedra apt. And we're we'll going to do a quick sources list and you yeah, source list dot D. See so if there's anything in source list dot D. So nope, nothing there. So we just have source list. Something we got here. So we go to sources list, now I'm into that. Now you notice all these uh, sources. Now these are Debian. How you read it is Deb. Deb SRC stands for a source file, like if you wanted to build it from source type thing. Most of the time you don't want so. But those are in there in case you want to do that. So it has Bullseye here and Main. Those are the main things to notice here. Bullseye Main this is the main system. Now, you, now if you want to change this well, so that... Uh, So that it's, uh, what you do is you put on the end of this, you put contrib and on free. Just like that. And mark that. And We'll copy it. I'm going to paste it on the end of every line in here, pretty much. Let's see. Okay. So you have all that now. Now when you exit this, you have to do an update to 
to have it registered, but it will get all non-free codexes and stuff like that, non-proprietary stuff. So remember, non-free doesn't mean it's not free. You have to pay money for it or something like that. It means that it's a uh, it's not open source. It's not not free and open source software. It's proprietary software, which has other things. And sometimes you have to have it. You know, even if you're even the staunchest uh, free and open source software person has to have some stuff in their thing because there's some things you just have to have in order to operate in order to use it, like if you use NVIDIA, that's non-free non source stuff. So, and then you save this, next it out, and then you do an update. Oh, uh, it's misspelling it, apparently. And I'll look real quick, I'll check back. Hyphen and non free, hyphen and yes, but hyphen and non free, that's probably our part of the problem. So we'll do that again. Oops. Put a hyphen and non free. Non hyphen free. Let me save it and exit. Let me do sure update. And it should work. Okay, so we apparently misspelled contribute as well. Contrib. Oh, I didn't left out the R on it. It's contrib, not like contributors. Not like contrib. Not like contib. Or contib and sweet contrib figures, huh? So we'll do this again. Okay. No, 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 car trip, car trip. And then now. I do. Okay. All right. So it takes care of that, apparently. So that's a contrib with R in it, contrib and Non dash free will get you non free software. Should look at it before I did that, huh? <laughs> so, anyway, that's how you add in non free stuff to there. And likewise, if you want to switch this to testing, it should be a major update. So, you want to you want to back up all your home directory and all that kind of stuff and all of the any programs you have, that kind of thing before you run it, but you want to change. The uh, bullseye, you see up here, in, there's a uh, Debian bullseye. You change that from bullseye to testing, or if you wanted to follow, you could use uh, the uh, code name for it, which is uh, Bookworm. They're all characters on a um, 
uh, Toy Story, basically. So, Bookworm is the next one that's coming down the pike, and Sid's like the the evil, evil uh, one that is all chaotic and mixed up and stuff like So, that's how you add in the non-free sources into your source list. Now let's see what we can do. Uh, we want to switch this to testing. I have to make sure I know exactly what to put in, but I think it's just testing. Testing, they have, they have the stable testing and your, I don't know what they call the first one, but it's like, it's the beginning of it all. So it's like all the new stuff to throw in there and some things have bugs in it and stuff like that. So you're more likely to hit bugs if you installed Sid on there, which you could do. You could play Sid to all, with all that. Uh, with with Bullseye, you would play Sid there and you get all the Sid stuff. But we're not going to do that. We're probably going to do testing. You ready to do that? Here, let's destroy this version of... Well, before we do that, let's, let's install a couple of packages. So uh, you go to sudo just an app update on so we go sudo apt install etop neofetch yes and it's done so htop this is on bare metal machine it's 1.3 gigabytes when out of 7.68 gigabytes. So it's about 8 gigabytes. The memory we have in there sticks, 24 gigabyte sticks, something like that. So it's running about a gig of, of it. One gig of that, 8 gigs has been used. And uh, it's a little bit, use that standard for for XFC. One of the things cool about XFC is you can lower your memory, like you have 4 gigs or three gigs, it lowers its footprint too. So it's only used about, I think I've seen as low as six or 700 gig megabytes of data it's using. It's down to XFC status, you know, that kind of thing. So it's pretty good. But mm, four gigs of CPU, or four, four CPUs are running pretty decent. And yeah. That's pretty good. Now let's look at your fetch. I learned to spell right. <laughs> so you got Debian Bullseye. Well, we got Debian 11 Bullseye. And Optiplex 5.10.0.20 AMD 64 kernel. At 55 minutes, have 2,577 packages. Bash is 5.1.4. Plasma is 5.20.5. You can win, obviously. Console. Hack 16. Is a terminal font. Intel is i5-34070, four, four of them, running at 3.6 gigahertz each. Intel HD graphics, and yeah, it says we're using about one, about, about the same megabytes as what HTOP said, out of our 8 gigs of memory, so yeah. So we should we install testing? Let's do that. Sudo and Now we're going, to do, we're going to change everything from, from Bullseye. We're going to change it off to be from testing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the replace function there, which is right there. 
it says control and your backslash search to replace bullseye spell it right bullseye yeah bullseye we're replaced with testing There you go. Now we're going to have to see if that works for this. Source 2. So you want to so replace that. Now, if you had anything in source D, the D directory for source list, D.D, you have to probably change those as well. I'm going to change everything over. Now when you do the update, it's going to do a lot of stuff, so hopefully it will work. Your fingers crossed. Pseudo. So I use any errors or anything? This part of it. Nope. The testing, all right. Now it says updates available. You bet there's updates available. 2,127 packages now be upgraded. We pretty much can upgrade every package in the list. So hold on to your hats. Here we go. <laughs> this one you probably won't want to do it on. You probably would want to do it on the command line for this one because it's going to update a lot of stuff, including discover, I would assume, and things like that. So. Probably not best to use that for this purpose. sudo at upgrade. Okay. Let's see. I'm using extra 1843 megawatts for additional disk space we used. I can't update everything to testing right now. Pretty cool, but I'm gonna come back when we get done with this and we'll see where we're at. If I have problems or issues or things like that, I'll come back. Okay, so we're in the middle of testing and uh, yeah, we uh, it's asking questions now. This is the uh, in cursors thing so yeah the near 105 keyboard pc is a denise is the one that uh usually is standard when you want a default us keyboard so yeah we'll select that and we'll go okay oh yeah i gotta use the right keyboard i can always forget that for some reason okay uh, English, yes, yep, that's fine for me. And then he goes on with it. It's updating stuff, so this is a critical part where the updates are then correctly or not, and everything updates without any problems or issues. Yeah, we'll be back when we get done with this. Just wanted to see that one part. All right, it's the second time it's done this. Let's come back to configuring keyboard configuration. So, yes, that's okay. And it goes on. New version and grub of various spot. Grub is available, but the version installed currently has been locally modified. What do you want to do about modifying various and file grub? The local version or keep the main package maintainers? Well, install the package maintainer version. So that's a new version, I guess. Hopefully that's the right question, or rather, hopefully that's the right answer. <laughs> Soon find out, can't we? I didn't change it, must have been changed by one of the updates we did. Okay, so it's finished. Yay.
no big errors I could notice or saw. I always have to see if it'll reboot and update to the right thing. And so in the system. Oops. Control. Reboot. See if this reboots in the, the new version or whatever we get. So we got on this side of this reboot, huh? Debian 12. Rubbing means you were okay. I made the right choice, I guess, when I said 6.1.0. That's 6.1.0 kernel. We are. Probably was an XOR before, and that's in a. Is it updated to Wayland? Yeah. Should have thought about that, but anyway, uh, I like an XOR because they have programs that use XOR a lot. When well, they don't either, even, don't either, either don't work or crash and burn or something like that. Wayland's pretty good. I really look forward to the day when we use Wayland and I have to worry about all this stuff, but. I have to worry about it. It looks nice, doesn't it? Overall. Okay, so what I want to do is reset everything back to what it was before. Let's move that. All right, so we got that now. Sudo at auto remove. All uh, the old stuff's been removed. It's probably the pinciest thing didn't get removed during the upgrade. So, I want to remove all that stuff to get it freed up, freed up space and stuff like that. Okay. Got that done now. Let's see what upgrades we got. At update. Four hundred and thirteen packs can be upgraded. Just wanna run that then don't we? Pseudo apt upgrade. And of course we'll be back on the other end of this upgrade too. We're done with this. Okay, really, the update was pretty quick, so no biggie there, but we can do this. I'm going to show you how to get back to XOR status. If you want to XOR, if you might have programs like me, you might have programs run on XOR only. So we get there, lean. Just need to. Log out, you don't need to do anything, just need to log out. Okay, then right here where it says plasma. Uh, that's the only option they give you, don't give you XOR. <gasps> oh no. I have to find out how you change this to XOR. Or paralysis, it's only testing, so. I can get away with some of it, I guess. Well, let's look at the one thing I want to look at real quick. I'm going to fetch. Mm. 
Okay, so we're bigger. Let's see what we got here. Plasma 520. Bash 5.2 and 5.1 last time. 2,786 packages. Now it has a 6.1.0-6 kernel. And... 5.20 is not the most recent version of Plasma, but it's a pretty up-to-date version. And so, yes, it's... And it's running about just under a gig of data. It closed. Okay. Make sure it's so that the power and stuff set up like you want it. Word space behavior. And law of screen locking. It looks like it's got that still set in there good. And you got our arrangement. That's still set. That's still set correctly. The one other thing you show you how to do in this is to add a space to dynamic tiling window manager and also how to install Nala. So we need to get to our terminal. It's funny, you retain the uh, background color, but it didn't retain the size of the font that I had it there. So let's fix that real quick. There we go. Fixed it. Except so now your current profile, apparently. That appears to be my big issue right now is all these things need to be upgraded and I can't upgrade them because I don't have permission to upgrade them. I have to investigate that and find out what the deal is on that. So I hopefully can fix it, but yeah. Let's install. Well, sudo apt install. Oh, yeah. And the cool thing about Nala is it's a wrapper for app for those who don't know. And it basically is more colorful. It's also more organized, better organized, as you say. So we do a pseudo Nala now. Update. And that. Almost the same thing as when you saw up there, but it's a little organized, a little more boxed in, so it just makes it easier to read, basically. So, then if you want to do upgrade, if you can, if it's allowed you to do it, see what it is. I don't think now it will force it to work correctly, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, it's just tuning in. We are um, going to install 112 packages. Upgrade to 93. Key back 4. I'll remove 57. Move 30. Maybe we'll. Who knows? We'll see what happens. It's downloading them. Wow. <laughs> I'm upgrading all those packages I couldn't upgrade before because I'm getting null instead of apt. Who'd have thunk it, huh? For some reason, I was able to do it, but Apt wasn't. But I don't understand that because Apt knowledge is just a package manager for Apt. So, who knows why I did it anyway. 
See on the side, assuming it takes a long time to do all these 515 upgrades. It's almost done. There's a new one. This fifth angel. My face broken. So. I pass up to him. So no dates what it says. Pass me a ring. So that's it. Yeah, hey, most of them updated and upgraded and fixed, hopefully. Find out as we use the thing if it has crashes or burns or something like that. I need to do a reboot after some of the updates. See what happens here. Oh, yeah. oh look, Plasma X11 up there. Bingo. Plasma X11, Plasma X11. New mountain background. Black mountains, pretty much. No errors, less than nothing going back home. See if we can get backgrounds in it now. Oh, yes. That's good. So you have these, you have old Debians, Data Debians, Home World Debian, Joy Debian, Joy Lock Screen Debian, Joy Ink Black or Debian, Lions Debian, Lock Screen, Lock Screen, Moonlight, Mountain Soft Waves, Space Run. I wonder where this one came from, this background here. I don't see it in the oh it's right there mountain right there. Okay, well it looks about one of the best ones on there so far I've seen. Sure to abstract backgrounds. So I'll leave it there. So you can add new images or from your personal stash or you can Get new wallpapers from your from there. So that's your background. Let's see what I have on here. Okay, that pops up good. Let's just do this real quick. Oh, 
You see where the little bit is packaged now. Chinese, I don't, I don't think any that do I, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think any Chinese data. Okay, so that's that. And one other thing I was going to show you how to do on this before I ended the program. That was I wanted to install Bismuth on this machine as well. And I'm going to do it by command line. So you first make sure Bismuth is in the repositories. I think it would be in testing, but who knows. Get that. This must not found. I see. That's too. Uh, search. There's Q in business here. Yeah. It's Q in business. That's why I didn't find it. Got a Q and a touch for a bit. Okay. So. And yes. And it's installed. So let's, uh, let's just reboot. And safe side. And we'll find out uh, how it works. Okay, now we have settings. Windows. Management. Window tally. And enable window tally. And buy. And then. If you want to do uh, appearance, 
You can add all the gaps in there, outer gaps. I can so we'll add, uh, let's see, maybe an eight on that. Eight pixels, top eight pixels. Side we'll put in five. Uh, the three in there. All right, apply that. And now we do a terminal, another terminal. Yeah, you see a little gap in between there? Another terminal, another terminal. So I do tiling windows in KWIN. So let's go back. That was Debian testing with uh, Bismuth installed on it. KWIN dash Bismuth, if you want to be specific about it. And I thought it was pretty cool that I got to successfully install all that. Never know how it's going to turn out. So came up pretty good actually so far everything seems to work for the most part we'll see you next time don't forget may the linux force be with you bye